Welcome to this episode of CGTN Special COVID-19 Frontline, and we are bringing you this live from Wuhan, the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak right here in China. And since mid-March, CGTN have been holding similar consultation, online consultations, and are joined by doctors from both Wuhan and overseas. And they've been sharing their experiences and knowledge accumulated about uh, this virus so that they can have a better understanding of the virus and they can uh, help to better uh, fight a better battle against COVID-19. And I am CTN's Xu Xingchen. And we're not talking about just saving people's lives here. We're also talking about ways to offer protections to medical staff. And they are the last defense between the virus and humanity. And today we're joined by Dr. Peng Zhiyong from Zhongna Hospital of Wuhan University. And he has been battling the virus since the very start. And in fact, Dr. Peng, you are one of the very first doctors to join our session. And also on the other side of the line, we have uh, doctors from the US, uh, from the National Institute of Health join us for this di discussion. But uh, you guys are the professionals. And I think I'm just going to leave it to you guys and to share what you have prepared to share with each other, Dr. Paul. Thank OK, you. OK, thank you. OK, so uh, now uh, can we start? OK, uh, sorry about the delay. So uh, today I will briefly talk about uh, what we learned uh, from the COVID-19 outbreak in Wuhan. And uh, I will briefly talk about uh, uh, the general features of the COVID-19 and uh, the uh, uh, strategies of uh, innovation for the COVID-19 and also the key points of the ventilation support for the patients. So first, I will briefly talk about the, the basic features of the COVID-19 patients. So the, you know, the age, increased age, and the uh, comorbidities. And the most of the patients uh, are relatively older and uh, much more uh, comorbidities, including the hypertension, diabetes, and the cardiovascular diseases. And also the most common symptoms, including the fever, fatigue, uh, dry cough, myalgia, and uh, uh, this near. Also, the uh, clinical process, uh, the, the time from the first symptom to the, uh, to the dyspnea was around five days, seven days to hospital admission, eight days to the ARDS development. And the, the typical lab test is lymphopenia and elevated LDH. The typical chest CT is ground glass opacity, initially uh, from the peripheral area of the lungs. The, uh, the typical features for the patients in the ICU. Here, the, the, the score, so so far score, average score, actually not so high. However, the p ratio is quite low, it's uh, around uh, one thirty uh, in our patients in the ICU, and uh, the most uh, uh, common complications uh, for the patients in the ICU, including ARDS, acute cardiac injury, and shock. The most uh, uh, common ventilation supports almost half of the patients requiring intubation. And some of, we, some of them switch to ECMO. Uh, next, I will briefly talk about the, the strategies for the trigger intubation for the patients. So first, uh, before the intubation, we need to prepare, including the, uh, you know, the PPE, including the, uh, the personnel, all the personnel uh, requiring the PPE, PPE training, and also uh, also they are also familiar with the medical history and airway conditions uh, of the patients, and they are, they are all uh, experienced providers for the intubation. Also, we need to uh, prepare for the backup plan for the patients for the for the intubation. 
So uh, for the, the basic of PPE uh, for the during the uh, interoperation, uh, including the, the surgical gloves, the gowns, the eye protection, the N95 mask, goggles, also hood, if possible. So uh, during uh, intubation, we need also uh, prepare for the, you know, for the uh, pre oxygenation at least uh, for five minutes with the 100 percentage of oxygen. Also, if, if possible, we give bolus of 200 mile of fluid. Also prepare the uh, prophylaxis uh, of vessel pressures to prevent uh, hypotension during the intubation. Also, uh, for the medication, we use etomidate, calamine, midazolam, rather than propofol uh, for the induction. Also, we use lotulorium for the uh, used as the muscular relaxants. So uh, during the intubation, so uh, we uh, we try uh, we try uh, uh, one attempt. So we use the uh, white the video, that is called uh, for the intubation. Also, we we prepare some airway device backup. So after intubation, we also. Uh, confirm the placement of the tubing as usual, and uh, also uh, after the after the intubation, we also uh, prepare uh, the you know the PPE. Uh, we we take off the PPE also uh, for the hand and hand hygiene. So this is very uh, uh, very useful protocols for the uh, uh, for the intubation. Uh, procedures. So here we we also uh, summarize the the cases of innovation we, we have done. Actually, we have done about uh, nearly two hundred cases for the innovation. So uh, so for the PBE, most of them using the N95 mask and also surgical mask, also uh, goggles, and uh, face shield. So using this uh, PPE, uh, no any uh, personnel infected by the uh, uh, COVID-19. So this is a very good protection for our, for, our pers for, for our medical professionals during the innovation. Also, uh, we check up the, uh, we measure the, the hemodynamics during the uh, intubation. Actually, most of the patient are complicated with hypotension. So also complicated with the hypo hypothermia. So we think that the, uh, the pre-oxygenation, so not enough for, for five minutes. So if possible, we prepare for longer time for the uh, pre oxygenation Also, uh, because uh, almost half of the patient complicated with hypertension, so uh, we suggest to give uh, at least 250 ml uh, bolus of fluid prior to the intubation. So also prepare for the prepare the vessel pressures uh, to prevent hypertension. Also, try to avoid the uh, propofol because propofol will inhibit the cardiovascular system. So this is our experience for the intubation. And also, uh, five patients uh, died, uh, uh, complicated uh, with the cardiac arrest during the intubation. So it, which indicated that so the hypothermia, the management of hypothermia is quite important during the 
uh, procedure of the innovation. So here we, we emphasize that the uh, hypothermia and the circulation collapse probably happened uh, during the intubation for the patients uh, with the COVID-19. So we should be careful about that. So, so the last, I will briefly talk about the key points of the ventilation uh, support for the patients. So uh, non-protective approach is extremely important for these patients. Uh, prolong the patients as early as possible. So evaluate the modes, the parameters we set uh, frequently. So uh, switch or change if not uh, appropriate. So titrate PIP and the tidal volume based on the transpulmonary pressure, if possible, or driving pressure. Keep the driving pressure less than 15. Uh, prevent acute core pulmonary, which is, which is always happened uh, in the patient with the COVID-19. Also uh, induced by the uh, severe hypoxemia and uh, subsequently uh, severe uh, pulmonary hypertension. So uh, be careful of the lung recruitment maneuver. Set the highest PIP at 20, because the high PIP will induce pneumothorax for the patients. And also, uh, uh, we have the flow chart for the patients uh, using the ventilation strategy. So uh, based on the PIF ratio, so if the PIF ratio is 200 to 300, we can try high flow nasal cannulation. But here, I recommend the high flow uh, used in the ICU environment designed with the negative pressure. So if the ICU environment uh, Without the negative pressure, probably the, the, the high flow uh, will uh, induce the uh, pollution uh, by, the, by the virus. And also, we monitored the virus level in the different ICU environment. And also, we found that the, uh, we can find the, the positive virus in the air, in the, uh, in the surface of the ICU equipment uh, uh, if without the negative pressure design. So uh, we, you, every, we uh, evaluate the efficacy uh, for, the, for all the non-invasive uh, ventilation based on the, the LOXI score. LOXI score is calculated from the respiratory rate uh, saturation and also FIO2. So uh, if the LOXI score more than three point, so we think that, that uh, ventilation probably works. If less than 2.8, so uh, we need to switch the, uh, to another ventilation uh, support. So for the non-invasive ventilation, uh, we should be careful about the, the, the BiPAP probably worsen the lung injury. So uh, evaluate the, the tidal volume when you're using the non-invasive ventilation. So if the tidal volume less than nine ml per kilo continue, if more than 12 intubated patients, so uh, if the PIF ratio is less than 150, so we uh, prefer intubation the patients. So also we need to evaluate the patient is response to the non recruitment maneuver. So, so also if the if a lot, if the driving pressure 
is quite high. We need to polarize the patients also with the prone position. Uh, and also we follow up the lung compliance. So if the patient's people ratio still no, and uh, also complicated with the acidosis and uh, hypercapnia, and uh, we need uh, we need, we need to switch to the ECMO for the patients. So actually here, I also share a case report for you, but uh, because the, you cannot see the, the PPT, it's difficult for me to show the, the case report. And uh, I mean, the, lesson, the lessons uh, we learned from this case, so is the, if the non-invasive ventilation Last the last the longer time probably probably would uh, worsen the lung injury. So this this lady uh, re uh, received the lung invasive ventilation in another hospital for almost nine days, and uh, when he came to our when she came to our, our ICU, she is the she is the severe. Uh, she was not sedated. Okay, so uh, this this patient, uh, when she came to our ICU, she's uh, extremely hypothermia, and uh, we intubated her, but uh, only for a short time, her condition become deteriorated, and uh, then we switched to ECMO for her. So after uh, nine days of ECMO treatment, so uh, she finally went uh, off uh, from the ECMO, and uh, another five, another uh, another five days, she uh, finally uh, went off uh, from the ventilators. So uh, here, uh, I uh, summarize uh, uh, my uh, talk. So the. The, so the, the critical ear patients tend to be older with more comorbidities and uh, laboratory abnormalities. So uh, prepare, uh, preparation of PPE and uh, uh, pra uh, pragmatic protocol during the innovation is important to prevent uh, transmission, uh, prolong the pre-oxygenation and the bolus of uh, fluids as well as the vessel pressures were required to prevent uh, hypothermia and uh, circulatory collapse during intubation. So tightening the both parameters of ventilation support is with lung protective approach is, cru is, cru is very important. The most common complications was ARDS, arrhythmia, and septic shock. Nearly half of the uh, patients in our ICU required invasive ventilation. So uh, thank you all for your uh, attention. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to take any questions from you. Okay, you mean uh, what percentage of the patients uh, using uh, innovation finally switch to ECMO, right? Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, almost uh, uh, 
uh, one fourth of the patients uh, with intubation finally uh, switch to the ECMO in our ICU. Uh, so, sorry, can you, can you say again? You described five patients that died in the patient. Oh, in the patient. Mm -hmm. No, no, uh, no, but, uh, no it's, the, it's the cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest during the intubation. It's it's not it's not the because this is a this is a big big database. It's the around the two hundred patients from two hospitals. So I mean, uh, five of the patients uh, in uh, complicated with cardiac arrest during intubation. During intubation. That would make you believe there's something that wasn't where you're missing. To a lot of echoes. Yeah, a lot of echo. I, I, I cannot hear clearly. Dr. Miao? why don't you repeat the question? Maybe it'll be better. I can't hear you either. Can somebody just type on the screen? Type on the screen. You do one more time. Okay. It might it might help if you pick up the phone and try to speak. Okay. Of the five that had a cardiac during intubation. Was there anything specific about or in common that would make you uh, have any specific So basically we are uh, experiencing this uh, technical problems about this teleconference application. But anyways, they are trying to uh, short out their ends. Uh, so basically, um, we had Dr. Pong from uh, John Ann Hospital of Wuhan University did this 20-minute presentation about what he found during his treatment uh, uh, during the past almost 100 days, over 100 days, and, uh, and share what he found about the treating coronavirus COVID-19 patients and the doctors from the United States. Uh, they've been questioning like um, how many patients have been uh, switched from uh, a ventilator to ECMO. ECMO is one of those machines to pump blood in and out of human to, to help oxygenate. And, and they also want to know more about this kind of uh, the death uh, problem during incubation. And according to Dr. Pong, some of the patients experienced cardiovascular arrest uh, during the incubation, but it is uh, still not a, a, a compare. It, it's it's not a significant, a huge uh, rate, a huge number. And anyways, so if you have any questions, you can uh, leave uh, a comments on our Facebook, Twitter, or even Weibo, and uh, and we can try to uh, answer some of those questions later through this uh, live stream. And probably we're just going. Got back to this uh, dear conference, teleconference, because Dr. Pong, we can see question right here. Someone posed this question. Okay, okay. I'm going to read out okay, okay, this yeah, question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, how severe and what is the mechanism of the uh, cardiac and uh, GI involvement and injury? Uh, can you answer that question for them first? Okay, okay, okay. So here, uh, here I saw a, a question about how severe. And what is the mechanism of the cardiac and the GI involvement in injury? Is it a direct injury from virus or, so, uh, or uh, sequencing of ARDS with ox uh, oxygen demand or, or the outweighing supply? 
Are there any certain uh, pressures that work better than others for this specific patients? So I, uh, I think the, uh, for the patients uh, are uh, uh, developed the cardiac arrest during the intubation. I think probably is the is due to the severe uh, hyp uh, hypoxemia, and uh, uh, this kind of patients uh, uh, actually they they have hypoxemia for a long time, and also uh, we found a we found a, a phenomena that there's no uh, I mean there's the you know, we, we all know that, you know, they have the uh, association be between the, the pulse uh, oxidation uh, and also the, you know, the, 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 the oxygen content in the blood. So, for example, if the, if, if the pulse, uh, if the pulse uh, saturation is around the, uh, 93 percent. You know, it means in, it means the you know the PO2 is, a, is around 70 uh, millimeter uh, mercury. But uh, however, in some patients, we found that you know the the you know the the saturation is uh, is 92 percent. But however, the the PO2 the PO2 is only 40. So this is the this is a uh, this is a very uh, specific uh, problem. We, we don't know how how this happened, and also we check the you know the 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 pH. pH is okay. We also check the, the hemoglobin. Hem hemoglobin is okay. So this is the uh, specific. Uh, this is the uh, Biza phenomenon. We don't know. So probably is the you know the patient shows uh, okay. His saturation is okay. Actually, his uh, uh, oxygen in the blood, oxygen level in the blood is quite low. So I mean, this patient is is need a longer time for the for the pre oxygenation. So before uh, intubation. So if the uh, if the if the if the the pre oxygenation time is, is shorter, probably we are induced the hypoxemia during the intubation. And we can also see someone asked, was there anything in common with the five patients that had cardiovascular arrest that uh, we should look out for? That's the patients you mentioned about, uh, they have, they experienced this com uh, complication during uh, the incubation. I mean, it's the uh, not only not only for the you know for the oxygenation, but also for the for the blood for the blood pressure. Also, this kind of patient is is easily to have uh, hypotension. So why we need to give some uh, bolus of fluid before intubation? So I mean, if the patient uh, had severe hypoxemia and also have uh, severe hypertension is easily to induce the cardiac arrest. So we should be careful about both, uh, both situations. And what about other ways? Because someone also asked, uh, okay. did you employ other event, uh, Okay, actually, we, actually we, haven't, we haven't used the nitric oxide for the patients. Uh, with the pulmonary hypertension, but uh, but we do uh, prolong the patients. Almost for all the patients, we prolong the patients. We we prolong the patients as early as possible, as soon as possible. So even the patient came to ICU uh, uh, without without intubation, not only for intubation, also we prolong the patients earlier, and also. Is the need need time to see the improvement of the oxygenation when you prolong the, the patients. So for the uh, for the ARDS from any from other ideologies, when you prolong the patients, it, you can easily to see the uh, oxygenation improvement when you prolong the patients. But for this kind of patients uh, induced by the COVID nineteen, it more it, 
in this time, probably it's a couple hours to see the improvement of the oxidation when you probe the patient. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I think that, you know, uh, we use the probe uh, position uh, to improve the, the shunting, the, the shunting, you know, the uh, VQ quiz match induced the shunt. shunt. And uh, for the innovation, of course, uh, uh, we use the N95 as well as uh, the hood with the pipa. With the with the, uh, the positive positive lecture. So uh, the patients, uh, uh, I mean, complicated with the you know anemia and as well as the hypotension uh, uh, prior to the cardiac arrest. So anesthesia also also very common in the patients in the ICU. I I have a report that almost the uh, almost the forty of the patients uh, complicated with the uh, anesthesia. So, uh, because we uh, we haven't uh, the such equip, uh, equipment uh, to use it, the uh, nitric oxide in our hospital, and also I, I think in the in the whole Hubei province, no any uh, there's no any hospital using nitric oxide. difficult terms so uh, because uh, from the states they've asked during the incubation should they use n95 masks or par parps so what is a parp feel about is the is the is the we wear at the hood oh the hood the know, facial yeah the hood uh, cover everything cover your cover your head oh, okay also uh, with the the positive pressure inside mm. yeah so that we would just call the uh, prs Oh, so is it the more higher end protective suit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. High level of the uh, personal protection. Mm -hmm. So there are some ways typing there. Let's see. So, uh, Dr. Andrew Mays from the National Institute of what, Health has what, what long, a few uh, questions long -term here. Long-term effects. Yeah. Okay, okay. Long-term effects, okay. After recovery. Yeah, okay. Long-term effects after so, recovery. Uh, so actually, uh, for, the, for our patients in our ICU, the, I just mentioned that the mortality in our ICU is the, uh, around 25% uh, to 30%. And also, uh, we are we are following up uh, the patients uh, from uh, discharged from our ICU. So now now it's almost the, the first three months uh, for the patient, the discharged you know from a hospital from ICU. And also we we are following we are we are uh, following up now. We hope we hope can get some information. And to, to provide some info, you to provide some useful information for you, but I don't know, I don't know what what is the long term effects. Probably I think it's the. Uh, I also follow up the uh, our patient, our patient uh, 
uh, received the uh, ECMO. Uh, actually, she uh, she was good. She, she is good now. What is what is arrhythmia? It's the AF. AF is it's very common, very common for the you know the uh, arrhythmia. Uh, <coughs> Go back to the main strain. Uh, there are some others ask, okay. what medication are you using to keep these incubated patients sedated? sedated. Oh, okay, yeah. sedated, okay. So, uh, uh, we, uh, we use the uh, metadolum uh, uh, for the sedation for, the, for our patients because uh, this type of the sedation uh, no, no any effects uh, on the uh, cardiovascular system. Were you using ARDS, not protocols for ventilation or APRV mode? Uh, we use the ARDS uh, net protocols you know, for, our, for the patient. Let's just see what Ling has here. Among all these patients on ECMO, what okay. is the percentage of the survival rate? So I mean, it's the survival rate is uh, we just uh, we just uh, summarize uh, the uh, result uh, uh, from our uh, data. So I mean, the overall uh, survival rate is a uh, is around uh, is more than is, is around forty percent, forty percent. So. Uh, so far, we have performed uh, almost uh, uh, almost uh, twenty uh, uh, ECMO for our patients, but only only nine patients uh, uh, survived uh, to the you know survived and discharged uh, to to discharge to uh, to home. Let's see, Dr. Wang. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is the this is the uh, uh, pulmonary emboli. Pulmonary. Uh, yeah. This is the also. I mean, uh, we also uh, follow up the DVT just using the echo. Uh, we find almost uh, almost half of the patients uh, had DVT in our patients, and uh, uh, but so far we found uh, uh, two patients. Uh, complicated with the uh, PE, but not so, not so severe, not, not so severe. But so we uh, we routinely use the hybrid for for this kind of patients. <coughs> pressure control or volume control? I think that's for. Uh, well. Initially, we use the volume control for our patients. Do you have, do you, how do you treat, uh, I cannot oh, pronounce cytokine, cytokine, cytokine storm. Cytokine storms, and cytokine storm is the, uh, we use the, you know, the, the monoclonal antibody or we using the uh, blood purification to treat the, the patients with cytokine storms. And also, uh, I uh, summarized uh, the data uh, from uh, our uh, study you know, using the uh, hemoperfusion uh, to, uh, to control the cytokine storm. So actually, the, it works for the, you know, uh, to decrease the cytokine level, to improve the the oxygenation, to improve the uh, hemodynamics, so we totally use, uh, used about uh, nine patients using the hemoperfusion, so it works. Uh, sorry, I I can't I can't understand my uh, question. Can, can you tell me? Did you try remdesivir 
uh, actually, uh, this is the uh, randomized trial. So uh, we we only uh, we only recruit about less than less than ten patients in our in, uh, from our uh, ICU. But I don't know which is treatment, which is inter intervention, which is the control. Any effect? I don't know. I don't know. I I, I think the the result uh, we are we are come out in the couple of weeks. Okay, you you mean the about the the, the patients get reinfected. So actually, is the I just have the data uh, from our hospital. I mean, it's, it's only from our uh, medical uh, professionals. Uh, we have in my hospital, we have almost uh, seventy medical professional infected uh, with the uh, COVID nineteen. So far, four uh, medical professionals got reinfected. So, but with your with with your follow up, these four patients, these four colleagues, they are the no no any symptoms. Just a uh, uh, quarantine in the hotel. And others are asking what medications are successful in your practice to treating the patient is similar to the other doctor's answer. Uh, question about remdesivir. So I uh, I don't know any kind of the medication uh, work uh, for the uh, for this for this virus. So we we still need time. We still need uh, more cases to confirm the result. So, so what percentage of the critical? Uh, so, so actually, uh, in my ICU, all the patients are adult patients, no, no, no any pediatric patients. So I don't know uh, how much percentage of the patients uh, is uh, are uh, pediatric. I don't know. Uh, there is actually a pretty interesting question. It's like, are you using Chinese herbal medicine? Via Hua Qingwen. I think it's the uh, for the Chinese uh, herbs is is used only for the mild or moderate cases. So try to prevent these cases uh, become deteriorated. But I I never use the uh, the Chinese herbs in our ICU. To be any physiologist, I'm worried about the intubation when patient in OR. Uh, when you intubate, I know uh, you said that N95 eye goggle. Yes. And uh, also you use the pepper. Yes. Uh, PP. Yes, yes, pepper, yes. For every patient. Almost for every patient, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you put another thing to the patient body, trying to create the negative uh, um, air or whatever. You mean the? Just in America. Yeah. Someone put a plastic. Okay. Bag, a drip. Okay. Okay. On the patient body. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 We. Yeah. We. We. We put the 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 plastic uh, back in the yeah in the in the patient in the patient body. Yeah. 
another question. You said a bypass. Yes. It's not the good. Mm, so the patient. So yeah. So be careful. Yeah. Depends on the time. Yeah. So when you when patient need a higher oxygen mm -hmm. from a nasal or mm -hmm. face mask mm -hmm. to the bypass, mm -hmm. how long does it take before you intubate? Okay, so uh, we we will evaluate the uh, efficacy of the you know, any non-invasive ventilation. So if the patients still have uh, dyspnea, still uh, requiring high concentration of uh, oxygen, still uh, complicated with the high higher heart rate. And then uh, we, we think we should we should switch to the intubation for the patients. So we have a we have a, a, a score. Which I just mentioned the score based on the, the calculation based on the respiratory rate, based on the saturation, based on the FIO two. So I mean the score is above three, you know, is above three point five. I mean it means. The non-invasive ventilation works. If less than 2.5, we think uh, the non-invasive ventilation didn't work. We need, we need to switch to the intubation. So we need to evaluate the patients every two hours. Two. Every two hours. Somebody asked, would you recommend early in, uh, in ventilation incubation patient, incubating pa patient? Uh, I mean, not, I mean, it depends. I mean, early, early uh, when, uh, in ventilation or early ventilation intubation patients, I mean, it's the, I mean, it still depends. So if the patient, I mean, we use the, you know, the lung invasive ventilation, it, it doesn't work. So we need, we need to switch to the intubation. So, so yes, we, we, have a, we have a very detailed flow chart for the uh, ventilation support for the uh, COVID-19 patients. So it depends on the, you know, I just mentioned, first we try, we, we, we try just based on the people ratio. So then we follow up. We, you, you, we evaluate the, the patient's response to this kind of the ventilation support. If not, we switch to another mode. Is it, uh, I think someone is also trying. Uh, also, this same doctor is trying to kind of reinform. Uh, okay. uh, reaffirm with you like the incubation criteria on COVID nineteen okay. patients. So I mean, the if the people ratio, if the patient came to the ICU with the people ratio less than one fifty, and then we will intubate the patients earlier. So if the people ratio uh, above. 200, and we can try using the uh, non-invasive ventilation. And then just the follow up the, the patient's uh, uh, response to the response to the non-invasive. If it respond, okay, go on. If it doesn't respond, change, switch to another mode. Do you use the PF ratio as a guideline for uh, proning incubated patients? I mean, the, uh, uh, we try to prone the patients as early uh, as possible, as early as possible. And uh, I mean, so Dr. Pong, do you think that we can act? Let them to ask two more questions, mm -hmm. and uh, we might need to refresh something that you mentioned with them with mm -hmm. our viewers. Mm -hmm. So, do you guys have more questions? We're going to answer two more. 
uh, we have right here Dr. Mangney's. Uh, do you use a delayed worsening? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, do you see a delayed worsening of patients after discharge? So uh, I saw the report uh, about the delayed version of patient after discharge, but uh, personally, I I think that is, I I haven't seen uh, any delayed uh, version uh, from our patients. So let's see. Uh, we have another. Uh, do you think that we can wrap up this for now? And uh, if they have more questions, they can email E or do you think, Dr. Pong? Yeah. So I think this is a good point to wrap up. If you have any questions, please mail me and I will pass them on. Uh, and, uh, but thank you again for joining us today and with your uh, So yes, start a okay. Yeah. I think they're they're good. Yeah, Dr. Bong, because um, uh, my apologies for some because of the the teleconference application, uh, it was not uh, that smooth. So a lot of doctors from the U.S. they hashed, actually they typed their questions for Dr. Pong, and I'm going to just refresh a little bit because uh, uh, some of our viewers might got lost. So first, um, because a lot uh, they've been curious about incubation, mm -hmm. uh, use, using ventilators and using ECMO, etc. And you mentioned about this non-invasive um, incubation, what uh, you, what ventilation. You, what you, what you, Would you mind to elaborate a little bit more, uh, just with the you know other doctors, etc., oh, okay. watching this live? Okay. Yeah, I, th I think they they they, they hung it up. Yeah, the end the session. Oh, end uh, the session. Yeah, but 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 then just about this non-invasive okay, uh, okay. ventilation. Okay. Um, you had this criteria about a three point five and two point five, mm. uh, and you need to check on patients every two hours. Uh, no, no, every two hours. Every two hours. So uh, it's okay. easy to to check because we based on their the res respiratory rate. Mm -hmm. It's easy to it's easy to to detect. Also, we we based on their you know the you know the pulse saturation. You mm -hmm. know, put the top yes. here, and you can see the pulse mm -hmm. saturation. Easy to detect. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, we we based on the you know the FiO two means the 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 oxygen concentration you mm -hmm. used. So that's very important to evaluate. You know the you know oxygenation uh, uh, after after the, the the treatment. So if this is good. Is high. It means, you know, this uh, ventilation support works. Yes. Uh, but what about like some other doctors also asked, like, yeah, like reinfections of patients. Uh -huh. And you mentioned like uh -huh. seven doctors from your. No, no, not seven. Four, four. Yeah. I mean, seventy uh, doctors. Seventy. Yeah. You affected. Yeah. But only four. Only four, you know. Only four. I mean, because this, this is first, which it mean what's the definition of the reinfection? The definition reinfection. It means the first. It means the patient okay recovered mm -hmm. already, and after you know, after a couple of weeks or after one month, so uh, you you can you also you detect yes. the positive mm -hmm. virus, mm -hmm. you know, in in, in, the, in the patient's body. Okay. So it means that. I mean, it is the it is two types, mm -hmm. and then we uh, we uh, consider that patient is reinfected. But, uh, but you have you give out this number like seven doctors, medical staff uh, in your hospital, Jonah yeah, uh, Hospital, seventy, 70, 70 doctors you got it, you infected, know, and initially only, you actually, yeah, yeah. But uh, only four later got yeah. reinfected. Right? Exactly, yeah. So, so what are the, your conditions right now? They are all they are okay. No any symptoms. 
Oh, okay. Uh, so I think uh, that's a lot of things. Uh, and, and about ECMO survival rate, you mentioned about it's right now at your hospital is 40%. Uh, more than 40%. More than 40%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Around, yeah. I think it's the, it's the 40 to 43. Yeah. And do you think early intervention, early, early re replacement of like changing um, patients from regular ventilators to ECMO will help? To increase the, uh, let's just just to increase. Do you think that will increase the survival rate? Like to put on patients. I mean, also depends on the timing. The timing is quite important. Mm -hmm. So if you initiate, you know, the ECMO treatment too late, you know, probably it it won't change the outcome for the patients. Okay, and, and you mentioned also like right now just like we don't really have a specific drug for this virus. Like like about drugs. Okay. Or yeah. So actually, you know, uh, they have uh, uh, several antivirus uh, medication, so such as the uh, remdesivir, mm -hmm. such as the uh, lopilovir, yeah, such as the uh, chloroquine, uh, mm, uh, uh, chloroquine, chloroquine, and uh, also, mm, I mean, uh, the, the, you know, from the small study, they show some effects. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we sh we need we need uh, more evidence uh, to see how this uh, medication work uh, for the patients uh, with the COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. And earlier, I learned from you that for your ICU, for for the unit that you are you you are, you are leading, you are in charge, that you treated like about 140 patients, COVID-19 patients, uh, during the past a few months. Yeah. And the survival rate is 75 percent, right? 75. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, what are some of just in short, like what are some of the tips that you think? Because 75 percent is not a bad number for those critically ill patients. So mm. what are some of those uh, tips that are you, you can kind of grasp from the experience? Ooh. Okay. Uh, you mean the, uh, for the tips? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, first, I mean, because most of the patients uh, died uh, from the, uh, the multiple organ failure. So, I mean, the, uh, the initial trigger is is uh, what's the hy uh, hypothermia. So if we can improve the hypothermia, probably we can uh, control the initial trigger to induce the multiple organ failure. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of the way uh, to uh, improve the uh, hypothermia. So I just mentioned that, you know, the ventilation supports quite important. So for this kind of patient, so if we can uh, improve the uh, hypothermia, uh, and then we can uh, uh, we can uh, control the development of the multiple organ failure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know, but uh, but me mechanical ventilation is double edged sword, mm. and uh, so we need to uh, be careful about the, the me mechanical ventilation. So uh, we just, uh, we have a. Uh, 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 strategy, which is called non-protective strategy uh, uh, for the mechanical ventilation. Mm. So, I mean, uh, if you can use the mechanical ventilation uh, well, and then you can improve the uh, <coughs> oxygenation, and also to prevent further lung injury. Mm. Yeah. So, okay, so I think that we're going to wrap up today. And uh, <laughs> as Dr. Pong has shared with us, like to control uh, hypo uh, like hypoxia, to worsen, mm -hmm. to, to intervent that process mm -hmm. can help mm -hmm. with a person's survival rate. And, mm -hmm. and they have this non protective uh, 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 strategy, strategy to, to help ease patient symptoms. And mm -hmm. thanks for watching for this episode. And we're going to deliver more such episodes in the, in the following month. And we know that on April the 8th, very soon, Wuhan is going to uh, lift its lockdown measure. 
Um, but still, doctors are fighting and trying to find a better cure to this virus, and uh, including a vaccine. And thanks for watching. And of course, you can follow us on our Twitter, Facebook, YouTube official account, and of course, download our official mobile application to stay tuned with the uh, live streams, episodes like this. Thanks for watching.